with this question, the first thing I want to show you is that the questions are going to be split up onto separate slides. So we can see here, we're going to have those three main questions and then those three main questions over there. Okay. So this first one says, is compound P, which is this one over here, is it a primary, secondary, or tertiary? So we've spoken about this before. So what you do is, let me quickly show you what a primary looks like. Then I'll show you what a secondary looks like. And then I'll show you what a tertiary looks like. Okay, so, so all I want you to do is I want you to look at the OH. Okay, so there's the OH. Then I want you to look at the carbon that is touching the OH, which is this one. Then I want you to ask yourself how many carbons are touching that carbon? How many carbons are touching it? Well, there's only one carbon touching it. So that is a primary. Let's move on to this one. So I want you to look at the OH, then I want you to look at the carbon that is touching it, and then I wanna look at how many carbons are touching that carbon. Well, that would be here and here. So that's two. So we call that secondary. Now, if we look at this last one, the tertiary, you look at the OH, then look at the carbon that's touching it, then how many carbons are touching that carbon? One, two, three, and so we call it tertiary. This is what we, this is how we distinguish between primary, secondary, and tertiary. You can also use this technique if they ask you for primary, secondary, and tertiary halo alkanes. It's the same thing. So they said, is P, so if we look at P, it's got an OH over here. Have a look at the carbon that's touching it. Now, how many carbons are touching that carbon? Well, there's one over there and one over there. So that would be a secondary alcohol. And now they said, give a reason for your answer. And your reasoning can literally be that the carbon atom bonded to the O H is bonded to two other C atoms. That's it. Okay, this one. Reaction A is an example of dehydration. Okay, let's quickly talk about that before we even um, look at what they're saying here. So we know that dehydration is definitely an elimination reaction where you eliminate water. When you eliminate water from your body, you are dehydrated. If you have, if you eliminate too much water from your body, you, like I said, you are dehydrated. And if you drink water, then it is hydration. So this is going to be an elimination where you release water. And so what happens is that if you look at this molecule over here, it's going to release water. How's it going to do that? Well, it's going to obviously lose this OH. What else would you have to lose in order to make water? Well, you'd also have to lose another hydrogen. So the way it works is that this carbon is the carbon that lost the OH. So it, it, it would be one of the carbons next to that one, either this one or this one that is going to lose a hydrogen. Now, you don't just choose whichever one you feel like. Like on a Monday, you choose the one on the left, and on a Tuesday, you choose the one on the right. No, there are specific rules. Remember, we've spoken about those Russian scientist names like Makarnikov and Zaitsev. Well, because we are now eliminating, we are going to use Zaitsev's rule. So let's write that out. Uh, when you are busy doing elimination, then we often have to take Zaitsev's rule into account. And remember, this is a thing where I always tell you, the richer get richer, the richer get richer, and the poorer get poorer. And when I say this, I'm talking about hydrogen. So when we are doing addition, then you look at this one. But when we are doing elimination, then we look at this one. So we are busy doing elimination here because we're doing dehydration. And so we are going to say that the poorer get poorer. So remember I told you that we're going to lose this OH. And I said that the other hydrogen that we're going to lose is going to either come from the carbon on the left or the carbon on the right. Look at that carbon on the left. How many hydrogens does it have? One, two. Look at the carbon on the right. How many hydrogens does it have? One, two, three. So what we said is that the poorer get poorer. So the one that is the poorest with hydrogen will become even poorer. 
So the one that has the least amount of hydrogens, which was this one, will lose, will, will become even poorer. So it will be the one that loses. So you're either going to lose this one or this one. Um, to work out whether we lose the bottom one or the top one, uh, we have to use Mandy's rule. Okay, now that was a joke. There's no such thing as Mandy's rule. Um, you can choose this one or this one. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's say we choose uh, this one over here. And so what does the question actually say? Oh, explain what is meant by dehydration and write the name of the catalyst. Okay, here I'm going into all the details about this reaction. Meanwhile, they just wanted to know that. Seriously, Kevin, read the questions. Okay, but I guess it still would have been like a, a good um, revision for that. Okay, so let's move on here. So to explain what is meant by the term dehydration, you could just say that it is the elimination of water. Or you could say H2O. Okay, this one says write down the name of the catalyst. Well, the catalyst is going to be, remember, we use different kinds of catalysts for different reactions in organic chemistry. Sometimes we use reactions that use platinum, palladium, nickel, sulfuric acid. This is the one that uses sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. Okay, this question says write down the type of addition. So you know that in addition, um, we've got like four types. You've got halogenation, hydrohalogenation, um, hydrogenation and hydration. So um, it's usually when you take alkenes. So let me show you the four types quickly. So alkene plus a halogen, well that is called halogenation. Then if you do alkene plus water, that's called hydration, just like if you're drinking water. Then alkene plus hydrogen, that's going to be hydrogenation. And then if you do alkene plus a halogen and a, and a hydrogen, so it's like a hydrogen halide, then we call it hydro halogenation. Okay, and then if we were using elimination, then you would just put the word DE in front of that, so D. Okay, but that's not what we're doing right now. Now we are looking at the addition. So it says write down the addition reaction represented by E. So with E, you are going from an alkene, and what you are adding is hydrogen. So that means it's this one over here, and so that would be called hydrogenation. Hydrogenation. Okay, now with this question, and guys, remember we are still going to do more questions on the next page. So it says write down the type of elimination reaction represented by D. So D is this one over here. So what we are ending with is an alkene, but we've got to try to figure out what we're starting with. Now that'll be quite easy because if you take this one and then you react it with HBr, all that will happen is that this Br is going to switch out with this OH. So this here is going to be the same as this molecule, just with a... Um, a BR. So this is going to be a halo alkane, right? And it's going gonna, it's gonna to have four carbons with a whole bunch of hydrogens and a BR connected. So we know that if this goes under elimination, what would be eliminated? Well, obviously the, eight, the BR is going to be eliminated and then one of the hydrogens. So we're going to eliminate an HBR. That is what you are going to eliminate. So what are you eliminating? A hydrogen and a halogen. Let's think of a nice name for that. D, because you're eliminating. Hydro, because you're eliminating a, well, and then you're eliminating a halogen. So we call it dehydrohalogenation. That is what you're going to say over there. Okay, this one says sodium hydroxide. Now we've so we know that sodium hydroxide is that. It's a very strong base is used as one of the reactants in reactant C. Okay, now we've spoken about sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide being used in these organic chemistry reactions. And what I've spoken to you guys in detail about is whether we use these things dilute or concentrated. And depending if we use it dilute or depending if we use concentrated, that is where we've spoken about whether it will go elimination or substitution, okay? We know that if you have an alcohol, 
sorry, not an alcohol, if you have a halo alkane, and if you react it with dilute NaOH, then what do you produce? You produce a alcohol. But if we use a halo alkane, and we use a concentrated NaOH, then it does elimination and you produce a alkene. Okay, we've spoken about this before. So they said um, sodium hydroxide is used in the reaction C. So in the reaction C, remember we're just going between an alcohol and we said this is a halo alkane. So it's this one here where you're going between an alcohol and a halo alkane. So it says what type of reaction takes place? Well, this is where you need to understand your reaction conditions and, and your different reaction types. So you know you get elimination, addition, and substitution. What would this be? Well, all that you're doing is you're switching the OH and the BR around, okay? Remember I showed you that now. This one would just be exactly the same, but it would just have a BR. So all that you're doing is you're switching these two around. So that is just going to be called substitution. Substitution. But that, that is also that weird reaction where you can also call it hydrolysis if you want to. Okay, now it says state the two reaction conditions for this reaction. Okay, so we definitely need to use um, NaOH must be dilute. And then you must use moderate heat. So moderate means not too hot, not too cold, moderate heat. Okay, so those are the two things that we need to use for that type of reaction. Um, where are we? We are now here. Write down the IUPAC name of compound X. Okay, very easy because we showed you what compound X looks like, but let's draw it out again so we can figure out the name. So we said that it's exactly this molecule, but just with the BR instead. Okay, and obviously all of these other things are hydrogens. So the name would be very easy. It's a four carbon, so that's B-U-T. Um, it's just a halo alkane, so we end it with ane. And then on carbon number two, we have a bromo branch. So that is the name, 2-bromobutane. This one for three marks. Use structural formula. R write down a balanced equation for reaction E. Now reaction E is where you take an alkene and you add hydrogen to it and you would turn it back into an alkane. Okay, so earlier on in the video when I went on and I explained this whole um, Zaitsev's rule, I thought it was a waste of time because we realized on the previous slide that we didn't need to know any of that. But now we're definitely going to need to know it because we need to know what this molecule looks like in order to understand better what is happening over here. So we said that when we're going from, and I explained this earlier in the video when we were doing this question um, over here, we said that we are, um, when we're going from here to here, we are producing an alkene. So we're doing some type of, and they told us it was dehydration. So we're losing out this OH. And then what we figured out by using Zaitsev's rule was that it is this carbon over here that is going to lose one of its hydrogens. And so to find out then what this product is going to look like, we're just going to go draw this. So it's going to be four carbons with the three hydrogens on the end. Then it doesn't have this part. It still has this hydrogen. And then it lost this hydrogen. You could have also used that one, doesn't matter. And then we've got these three hydrogens. And then remember that carbon always has to be surrounded by four things. But here we can see that this one is only surrounded by three and this one is only surrounded by three. So to fix that, we put a double bond. And that is the alkene that we have over here. So now we know that this looks like that. And so now we can go do this reaction. So we can go say plus, and then you can say either H2 or you can put HH, it's up to you. And then this is really easy now. All that's gonna happen is that one of them is gonna go um, over there and the other one is gonna go over there. And then that double bond is gonna break. So this double bond is gonna break open. And so you're then gonna end up with a structure that looks like this again. And oh, we should be putting an arrow to say that this is the product. And then these two positions are now available for business again. And so we can put the hydrogen and the hydrogen from here. And that is the final 
that is the reaction that they are looking for. So we're taking this alkene, we're adding hydrogen to it, and we're producing um, an alkane. Now it says write down the IUPAC name of this molecule that we've just made. Well, it doesn't get easier than that. It's a four carbon alkane. That's just gonna be butane.